is our second in a series of three essentials on prayer. And last week we just did simply the prayer of help. <laughs> a simple one word prayer, right? The help prayer is the giving over, the surrender, the, the, the recognition that there is, yes, we have the divine power within us and sometimes it's just the giving over to the allness of the source, right? Today we're going a little more traditionally new thought, unity, affirmative prayer. What built our movement is affirmative prayer. And prayer of all kinds is always important, right, to our lives, to our everyday lives. It gets us back at center. The only real true prayer to pray is the one that's in your heart, right? Whatever is, is true in your heart. Affirmative prayer helps us line up a little bit with, with our affirmative principles, or a lot. <laughs> So there was a, a um, sea captain who realized that his ship was sinking. And so he called forth all the people that were on the boat, including the staff. And he said, who here knows how to pray? Or actually, does anybody know how to pray? <laughs> and there was a pastor at the back, and he stepped in, and he said, I know how to pray. And he said, great. You pray while the rest of us put our life jackets on because we're one short. <laughs> And yet prayer can be like a life jacket, a saving grace, if you will, for us. Did you know that despite any outer appearances that you have an illness or that you don't have whatever the full vitality is, that you know the full energy, maybe you feel exhausted or there's some kind of um, tension or discomfort in your body, that despite all of that, that the truth is that you are whole and well and that you are vibrant and that you are strong in every way? And did you know that just because your bank account doesn't show that you have very much money or there's not much in your pocket or your wallet or under your mattress or in your purse, wherever you store, you're good, that you are wealthy and that you are prosperous and that you can be generous and free flowing with all the good that you have? And did you know that when you believe that you are not quite enough or inadequate in some way, that the truth is that the spirit that created you, the essence of God, thinks that you are immensely valuable, perfect and whole in every way, no matter what you do or do not do, exactly as you are. That's affirmative prayer. The knowing, the seeing, the bringing forth, the foundation of our faith and speaking those words of truth, to know that for ourselves. If some of these things sound like, oh, well, that sounds nice, but where is that? Where can I find that? Well, I'll give you some scriptures so you can really you know, grab on to that it's written somewhere. In Genesis, in the Hebrew Bible, it says that we are made in the image and the likeness of God. In Luke, it says the kingdom of heaven is within us. In both the Hebrew and the Christian scriptures, it says that God says, did I not say you are gods? In the Hebrew, it says, I said that you are gods. And in the Christian scriptures, Jesus reminds the people, because we still didn't get it right then, still trying to get it now, that isn't it written in your scriptures that God said you are gods? And then later in Paul's letters, in, in his letter to the Colossians, he says, Christ in you, your hope of glory. So over and over again, we get these messages. And in the world scriptures, there are those messages too, that this truth, this innate truth, this divinity, this wholeness, this incredible power rests inside of us, is accessible to us, that anything could be downloaded out of the infinite intelligence of the universe, because that is what our source is. That's how our movement was built, you know. Unity is built on affirmative prayer. That's how it was created. Our co-founders, Myrtle and Charles, healed themselves through affirmative prayer, and they went on to spawn an entire movement. Did they know exactly what it was going to look like or what they were doing? No, but they just stayed true to what was inside of them each step of the way, and they affirmed it into being, standing on that principle, solid knowing of faith. 
And so it is, despite any outer appearances, I am healthy, I am whole, I am vibrant, I am strong. Despite any outer appearances when the depression was going on, that we are prosperous and we are wealthy and we are generous and we are attracting more and more good so that we can continue to share this good, this good message that we have come into that has done so much for our lives. And so that's kind of the, the, the foundation from which we come. So affirmative prayer is a, is a tool to help us remember the divine truth of who we are, essentially, to remember again and again to align ourselves with that truth. It's, what it is not is maybe prayers that you have been exposed to over the years, or maybe as a child you learned to pray, like, like the pleading prayer that you might do for, you know, that you might plead your parents to buy you some candy or a toy. It's the pleading prayer, please God, give me, let me, do this for me, you know? Or the bargaining prayer, anybody ever do that one? If you give me this, I'll do that, you know? <laughs> And so it's like the man who was looking for a parking space and he was late for court and he was really stressed out and so it, it, he was so stressed that he prayed. Can you imagine? <laughs> and so he's there, he's driving through this crowded parking lot and he's saying, okay, okay, okay. Please, God, God, if, if I get a parking spot right now, I swear I will go to church on Sunday and, and I'll give 10% of my check and, and oh, oh. Never mind. There's one. <laughs> Anybody ever do that one? <laughs> or something like it? <laughs> and we do that in different ways, don't we? You know, we're in the intensity of what it is that we need, and so we're, then we're in the intensity of the prayer, and then along comes that outer need, and it's like, oh, pfft. Forget about it, but it's the praying up, right? It's the pre-praying, it's the everyday work that allows us to be where we need to be at any given moment when something comes along. Yesterday, I, I watched this video that was, uh, which I, well, I watched it a little bit, two seconds of it, as much as I could stand. It was something posted on, on Facebook, and it was, it was horrific, um, and it was about a, um, a dairy company that's connected to Coca-Cola that's doing some pretty... Um, horrible abuse. And so I, I could only manage two seconds of it, but I want to bring it in because affirmative prayer can be used to heal our world. And so it's like, so, so that happened, but it didn't just, you know, so it, it disturbed my heart. I thought about last night when I was falling asleep. I thought about it when I woke up. I thought about it when I was praying at 9.30, and I thought, well, maybe I'll just talk about it because it's, it's an opportunity. It's a kind of common thing that we're getting exposed to, right? That some pretty heavy stuff in our world. But what can we do with it, you know? So I give thanks for the activists that are out on the front lines, the journalists who tell these stories, right, and put, put their lives on the line sometimes even, or, or put themselves in pretty big situations to get these stories out, to expose things that need to be exposed. And, and I'm not gonna be that person, most likely, because that, that's not my call. But what my call is, is to hold that kind of thing. And that is a form of activism. That is a form of shifting the world, is when we can hold something like that in our hearts, let our hearts break open, and then and speak the truth. You know, and, and who can we pray for in that situation? Well, we can pray for the little calves, and we can see them whole and well and comforted and protected. We can see divine light all around them lifting them up and shifting them into a different reality of life. And we can see the corporation itself opening its eyes to what's going on and rectifying the situation, making it good, making it right. And we can see the individuals who, and this is really important, that we pray for the people who are hurting the most, which are the ones who are hurting, right? The ones who are causing abuse are the ones who, who need the prayers the most. And so we pray for their healing, their wholeness, their hurts to be somehow uh, um, given over to spirit. And, and we see then whatever needs to be healed in them healed so that our world can open up into what it is meant to be so we can call forth the divine truth. So whatever you see in the world or experience in the world, you can apply, you know, it, it's, we're not helpless. I think a lot of times this is where we go, well, I feel helpless, but you've got great tools. You're a spiritual being who knows the power of prayer. Pray, 
It makes a difference. It shifts everything. And when more of us pray, we have this whole critical mass that can shift things in the directions that we want and to open up to the truth and let, let the divinity be known in all of us so that we can stand tall in who we are, healed and whole and healthy in every way, mind, body, spirit, heart. So, so there's so much that is available to us in, in prayer. You know, it's not, a lot of times there's a lot of these misnomers, like somehow, even if we might not intellectually think it, on some level we might think that we pray to change God's mind, like the child who's doing the, or the person who's doing the pleading prayer, right? That somehow we're going to shift God's mind as if God is some kind of human entity <laughs> that has that kind of, you know, um, shifty ego. <laughs> but, but that's not it at all, right? It's a principle. It's, a, it's really an unchangeable foundational principle. And so that principle is, is that goodness that we talk about, that all loving goodness, that omnipotent presence. And so it's just you line up with the principle or you're misaligned with the principle and then you bring yourself back into alignment. And so we don't pray to change God's mind. We pray to change our minds, right? All the work is about changing our minds. In Romans, it says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It is the renewing of our minds that transform us into, or really turn us back to the truth of who we are. So, um, you know, how would you feel, if you think about, how would you feel if you saw yourself, if you saw the world as God sees? You know, how would you feel if you saw yourself as complete, as whole, as 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 perfect, really, as, a, as an ideal creation, as worthy, as more than adequate. How would you feel if you knew that you were free and prosperous in every way, if you knew the world itself was perfect and whole, even in its seeming imperfections, because it's the ability to see through and to pull forth the good, to pull forth the blessings. And that is a part of how we would begin to see and how we do begin to see as we practice more and more. Affirmative prayer helps us know our divinity and it just takes some practice. And so that shifting, that shifting in thinking is often a shift from a place of lack. So if somebody says I'm sick or I'm lonely or um, I, I'm broke, and then we often will pray so that they won't be sick or lonely or broke, right? But really, there's something more powerful there that we can grab a hold of, because when we're just speaking to the need, we actually multiply the need. But instead, what we want to reach for is what's behind that. What does a person really want? Well, I want prosperity. I want financial freedom. I want generosity. I want wealth in my life. I want wholeness in my life. You know, so that's what we are praying. I want connection and love. That's what we know to be true, and that's what we pull forth. So it doesn't mean when we do this that we ignore what, what seems to be the block or the thing that is unwanted. Because, you know, the old saying, whatever you resist persists, right? So it's not a, a resistance. It's not a not acknowledging what's here and now. In fact, affirmative prayer can be very powerfully used to sink more deeply into the presence that is here right now. So if you're not feeling well, let's say you have a virus, instead of pushing against, oh, I don't have time for this, or I don't feel good and it's slowing me down, or whatever the, the storyline is there, then instead you can embrace it and, and look, what is, what is here for you? You know, and to just say, oh, this temporary illness is passing through me. And as this passes through me, it strengthens my immune system and it gives my body the much needed rest that it has wanted. And the truth is I am whole and well. And so it's like we acknowledge it, we allow it, you know, push against it. It's not, it's not, a lot of times people get the misnomer that affirmative prayer is like a denying or a papering over, but it's not. Affirmative prayer is very much being present to what is present and, and embracing it, allowing it, sinking into it, the experience that is right here, right now, more deeply. And then at the appropriate time, we move to the next step. The key is, the art is knowing when to move, when to make the shift, right? Not to stay too long here in that space, but to allow it and to embrace it. If you're sad, if you've lost somebody, what a beautiful expression of your love. 
right? Your tears. Your tears are a, a, a joy. They're a, a blessing. Even though they may not feel like a joy, they are a blessing because they are a deep expression of your care for someone you love. It's, a, it's an expression of love. And so you might say something like, my sadness is a testimony to my deep caring. My tears release painful feelings of loss. I am simply expressing love, and that is enough right now. I rest in the presence of the Holy Comforter. You know, that, that is a prayer. So it's not like we pray to climb out of our grief. We pray to like sink into the beauty and the depth and the blessing that is right here, right now for us. And at some later time, we might pray for the new adventures to come, the new life, whatever it is that is ready to come through. So it can be very much about honoring what is present, honoring what is here. Or as one wise child once said in, in drawing forth a blessing as she's shoveling through a bunch of horse manure, I know there's a pony in here somewhere. <laughs> Just trusting, right? <laughs> With that kind of childlike knowing, there is a blessing in here somewhere, and I'm going to find it. So the, 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 the beauty of this shifting, this, this movement, this changing of mind is such a powerful experience. I know everyone in this room has experienced it when you were in a place of limitation and you shifted into the abundant truth or when you were in a place of not enoughness and you shim shifted into a prosperous understanding through affirmative prayer and faith. So um, years ago, and I guess it was 2012, um, Brenly and I made the decision to, to move to California. And this has been a dream of mine for a long, 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 long time. I always knew I was going to live in California. And I always wanted to live on the coast near the ocean. So this was our, you know, we, it was our affirmation. We, on a prayer, li literally on a prayer, we got here to, uh, to Santa Barbara is where we chose. So um, we did a little choosing, too. So I think we chose pretty well. <laughs> and... Uh, and we came without jobs, and we came without you know, plans. We came without a place to live. It was, we literally came on a prayer. And um, of course, all of, our, all of our needs were fulfilled. You know, We found a great little place to stay temporarily, and then we found a cute little house that we could ride our bikes 10 minutes to the ocean. And Brenly got a job the day we arrived. And you know, just boom, 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 everything fell into place. So w another dream that we were holding was to adopt a child. And so we had started the Foster to Adopt program, which is a long, drawn-out program. If anybody's been a part of that, you know something about it. So about halfway through that and about a full year in um, of living in Santa Barbara, we realized that it was getting a little bit financially tough for us to maintain the, the rent where we live in a cute little house. And it was you know more than four times our mortgage for a much bigger house back in Missouri. So it, it had been a big shift, you know? We were dipping into savings a bit. So it was like, okay, so what do we do now? And so we were thinking about, you know, what, what, you know, what were our choices? Well, probably to move and downsize or get a roommate. And so we decided we really loved where we were, so we wanted to stay and we'd get a roommate. But then that became like, ugh, get a roommate? I mean, our place is pretty small. There's one, you know, one bathroom, pretty small backyard, two bedrooms. We're not going to know this person, you know, so it's like all that. Plus, we had two dogs. I mean, there was a lot of, you know, life in our little house. And so, so it was this drudgery that we went, you know, put it out on social media, and we interviewed a few people. And I was like, oh, no, it's not quite right, not quite right. And then I said, I had this divine idea. I know, let's follow our unity principles. <laughs> let's use affirmative prayer. What an idea. So we put it into an affirmation. We started talking about what is it? Well, what if we attract somebody who enhances our lives? Oh, wow, that could be a possibility, huh? So let's know it. Let's, let's claim it together. So, so our affirmation became that, that we are now attracting a, a roommate who helps us pay the rent and enhances our lives. It was within a day, I think, maybe two, that we got this photo that came for somebody who was interested. And it was this lovely young woman holding a 10-month-old baby. And we just, like, we both just said, that's the one. You know, like we didn't even have to talk to them. We, we did the formality of talking, but it ended up being Alice and Grace, who many of you met, um, who have 
off and on lived with us since Grace was 10 months. She's now six years old, and they've recently moved out again into their, their own space. But it's been just this beautiful dance, right? And, and after she came, all the needs that we had and desires we had with adopting were fulfilled. You know, we wanted a child in our lives. We wanted to have an impact, on, hopefully a positive impact on a child. And we also wanted to have just the joys of being with a child. And so our, our blessings were multiplied. And this is what happens with affirmative prayer. We just line up. We speak the truth. We see, what is it that I really want? Now, what do I really, really want? Now, what's the, what is it that we're, we're, we're really calling forth here? What could happen? What's the possibility? And then even the probability, and then even the assurance once we get you know, in that place of real strong faith. And then we call it forth, and things happen in ways that we might not possibly have imagined. Greater blessings than we could have asked for. So that's the beauty of this way of being, this way of praying. It's, it's founded on the power of the word, which doesn't, it's going to get more godly than that. In the, remember, in the beginning from John was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The word was God. The power is God. The word has the power of God. And so using that brings forth that which we want. It's a little bit like... Um, search engine optimization. Stick with me here for a minute. <laughs> or keyword optimization. That's when a, a webmaster will use certain words to make sure that they can drive more traffic to their website, right? And when somebody visits a website, it's called a hit. So when we have a shift, a spiritual truth that comes in, it's kind of like a hit, right? There's a spiritual truth that comes in, and it begins to attract what we want to attract. It, more good comes to us. So there's this process of aligning that happens. Affirmative words are like keywords. They're words that ha carry power, the power of God. They're shades and faces of God in words like love and compassion, kindness, truth even, power, wisdom. I mean, you know, all of those words that we love to use, harmony, joy, you know, it goes on and on, right? So when we speak those words, we're using the word of God. We're attracting to us that which we want to experience, more spiritual truths that allow us to align with what we want. The seeker and the finder align, just like in a website. The seeker and the finder in us get aligned with the truth. And so you know what happens for, uh, if you'll stick with me for one more minute in this metaphor, that the, the webmaster, um, what happens for the website itself is that the more alignment happens, the more attraction happens, the higher they go on the list. So when somebody else is searching, the more quickly they'll find them. It's the same thing for us. The more we are in alignment, the more spiritual hits or spiritual truths come for us, the more we attract our good, multiply our blessings, the, the higher our consciousness raises. We don't go to that place of lack and limitation anymore because there's nothing for us there. You know, we recognize it's like there's nothing for us there anymore. It's not, it, it's not even fun. You know, it's just, it's, it's, it, it, it leads to things we don't want to experience. And so we stay at this other level and we keep attracting, attracting, raising our bar of consciousness. Affirmative prayer helps us do that. Make that connection, keep that alignment, raise up the bar. So what do you want? I mean, you can claim it. Whatever it is that you want, when you claim it, the good comes. Sometimes you just got to say it's time, you know? I don't, I don't know about you, but you might be one of those people that that is always waiting for the right time, you know, the right, the stars to align just so, or the certain amount to be in the bank, or whatever it is that you think has to line up. And sometimes you just gotta go, you know what? This dream, this idea, this thing I want has been rattling around in there for long enough. It's time to just claim it. It's time to step out in faith. It's time to say, it's time, I'm doing this. This is happening. And watch, watch how things unfold. Florence Scovel Shin, one of the early unity teachers, said, your word is your wand. Speak it and see what happens. And the more you speak it with an open heart, a prayerful space, the more you believe it, 
the more you begin to know it, the more powerful that word becomes, the more powerful your wand becomes, so to speak. So we can um, see the potential in just about anything. You know, we can see, we can know the potential in just about anything. And there's lots of different ways in the world that it shows up for us. On Friday, we were at a nature immersion. And um, a lot of us had walked and seen or walked on top of or cracked open acorns as we walked. But somebody just beheld the mightiness of that oak tree in front of them and recognized that cracked open acorn underneath their foot that they hadn't been paying attention to was actually the pure potentiality of that mighty tree. That tree that maybe has stood for hundreds of years, that's provided shade and home and food and all kinds of things for the life around it and oxygen for us. You know, it's, it's that potentiality. So if we can see in the seed that gets planted, the, this, the, the nugget of an idea that there is pure potentiality in that, that is us too. You know, we are the divine idea, the expression of the divine and all these beautiful forms. And so if we can know that that's what we're calling forth out of the ethers, maybe, this, this pure potentiality to rise up to be all that we can be. There's so much to this. But it comes down to just the base idea of making firm what we already know, reaching through all the mess of distraction and heartbreak and everything else and using it, using the power of it, but going to the, the, that seed of truth, pulling the acorn out and knowing, no, this, this is my word and my word is my wand and this can become something amazing. You know, maybe years ago, if we would have seen a little acorn and somebody told us that will become that, we would have said, yeah, right. You know, but now we know it, so it's just sort of commonplace knowledge, right? Oh yeah, the acorn becomes the oak tree. So it's the same with us. It's like the more we walk this path, the more we use this tool of affirmative <coughs> prayer, the, the higher our vibration goes, the more open our, our consciousness becomes, like Eckhart Tolle is the flowering of our consciousness. And it, then it attracts more good and more good. And then as a a big mass of folks in this room even, if we pray one thing that we all want to have happen, healing in the world, wholeness, peace, whatever it is, we can shift. That's the power. So start maybe small, start with a parking spot. <laughs> if this is new to you, start somewhere like that and begin to practice and then see how it works in your life. And then let the ante be upped to bigger and bigger things. What is it that's knocking on the door of your heart from the inside out that says, I want to be known through you. I want to be seen through you. I want you to be able to, to be this quality in the world or to have this experience in the world. All of us have desires and dreams. I hope we have them until our very last breath, some kind of desire or dream. And we can put the power of the word on that and begin to affirm the truth in it. So an affirmative prayer has present tense. We claim it in the now. So I am is a prayer. Thank you is a prayer. I am, and then you can fill in the blank if you want. I am love, I am loving, I am health, I am wholeness, I am power, I am presence, I am faith-filled, I am joy-filled, whatever it is. I picked a few for us to close with, but you can fill in your own. So let's, let's close with this affirmation, this affirmation of truth, knowing this for ourselves, for our world, for our lives, bringing to the forefront of our lives and the foreground of our minds the very truth of who we are. Together, I claim the truth. I am whole, free, and joy-filled. And so it is. Thank you.